I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics and Hobby King. Uh, today we're going to uh, do a little uh, uh, video on a subject that uh, was recently brought up to me that they felt that I needed to discuss a little bit, and that is a throttle curve. A throttle curve on electrics I don't feel is very useful most of the time. I think over the years I've probably had three electric planes that I really felt needed uh, a throttle curve. But conversely, uh, uh, Tom actually has to, has been working on a throttle curve for his um, his extra or his edge. He's been, but it's a gas plane, and often the uh, the gas and glow models, you know, really are hard to find a nice soft spot where the plane is hovering, and you can add a little throttle to make it go up or uh, decrease a little bit to make it fall. A lot of times they tend to have an all or nothing kind of a, a, an action on the throttle. So you're, you know, just a tiny click away from the plane climbing much more than you want. So you find yourself just blipping the throttle a lot more. Um, the key to setting the throttle curve is really simple. Uh, you know, take your plane up into a hover and find that, that spot where it's hovering and uh, wherever that kind of uh, zero mode is where the plane is, is uh, buoyant. With electrics, it's kind of easy. Uh, you can just hold it in your hand and put the throttle up until it feels like it can almost float out of your hand. Uh, just make a mental note of where it is and then go through to the uh, uh, throttle curve section. And basically, the throttle curve starts looking like a dead linear zero to 100. And if right around 30% there, or 40%, or even 60% is where it is kind of buoyant, all you have to do is basically just flatten that area out a little bit so that you know two or three clicks uh, will get you to where the plane is climbing um, or falling. Uh, and just soften it up. It, it never happens first try, but, but basically you, know, you can kind of dial it in. Um, I don't like making it too soft. And again, every precision aerobatics plane I've ever had, uh, linear is just fine. The, the, you know, the motor's not uh, uh, going to just rocket it up with one click or anything like that. So um, I think it's partially due to the fact that the motors are very matched to the airframes. Not super overpowered and definitely not underpowered. So you know, if it's in the Goldilocks zone, uh, it tends to behave the way it's supposed to. Again, I prefer linear, but if you want to do a throttle curve, um, I'll give you a little better idea while it's uh, flying what to do. Okay, I also want to bring something else up uh, from the throttle settings kind of uh, standpoint. Um, there is something in your ESC called governor mode. And you know, uh, I'm giving people information that tends to, uh, that ends up being new information. And this is relatively new information that came to me by my friend Jim. And that is putting your ESC on governor mode actually turns your throttle into an RPM control rather than doing what it typically does, which um, is you know proportional voltage, basically. It's actually pulses that it's sending out, but for the most part, um, as your battery loses voltage, basically your throttle control changes a little bit. Um, it becomes proportional to how much voltage is left in the battery. Um, if you put the ESC on governor mode, and this is especially valuable for pattern and other things, your settings on the throttle will always control the amount of RPMs. So if at max is 10,000 RPMs, half throttle will always deliver 5,000 RPMs no matter uh, how the uh, battery is performing at the moment. So it's, it's, a, it's really helpful um, and I, I have associated governor mode with helicopters and I ignored it for many, many years. Uh, I do fly helicopters, I love 3D helicopters, governor mode is a super important part of it. But as it turns out, Governor mode is really valuable for flying airplanes to keep your RPMs and your throttle control consistent. Anyway, a throttle curve can be really helpful when you are uh, 
in this configuration because it, it does keep you from having to blip the throttle as much. And adding a throttle curve also, you know, once you get up in a hover like, like this, it can just soften this area. So you, there's a, a much broader um, uh, window as to where the plane responds, you know, just a little bit instead of a lot. Um, having a throttle that's a little out of control is a real pain in the butt. And um, again, Tom is having that trouble with his, uh, his giant scale plane with a gas motor. Um, I think, uh, you know, having a throttle curve is potentially very helpful in a rolling Harrier. And I know in, uh, I had a couple of 40% planes that were notorious for having only two speeds. One is fast and the other is, you know, the plane falling down. But having a throttle that's really responsive makes a lot of this really easy to, to, to really dial in this, uh, you know, the, the altitude and stuff like that. So in my opinion, you know, a throttle curve is, you know, some knowledge that everyone should have, how to program it and how to use it. But you don't have to be so quick on the trigger to program one because I think most uh, most uh, planes of this nature, electric and electric aerobatic planes, you know, the throttles seem to, to do pretty well just linear, as long as the plane's not really overpowered. Again, here's another configuration where uh, the throttle curve, I think, is amongst the most important things because when I'm pushing up out of this to stand up, that's really tricky to find the throttle uh, setting that's just lets it stand up. And you can see on videos with, you know, my giant scale uh, gas planes and stuff like that, you know, you can see me really, you know, stand it up very smoothly. And with the gas ones, it is a result of having a really nice throttle curve. Um, my uh, AMR 60, that that big biplane, is the one that when I'm standing it up from an inverted Harrier, uh, it, 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 it tends to require a lot of throttle management where if I would program a curve, uh, it might be a little bit easier. And in fact, I might just try that just to see how, how much better it works out. But this maneuver here, when I'm standing it up into a hover, if I want to, if I want to stop and hover, you know, there's a, there's a point where you have to add a lot of throttle to keep it up there. All right, here's Tom coming in with his giant scale. And as you can hear his throttle going up and down, he's having a bit of trouble with it from the standpoint of the throttle curve. He's kind of locked it in now. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to have somebody else look over his shoulder while I'm filming. And when he does get it to settle into his hover, Tori's going to watch and see exactly what his uh, throttle setting is and where he is when it's close. And then we're going to soften that entire area. Okay, what just happened is I took Tom's plane up to try and figure out what is or isn't wrong with it. And it seems that, you know, uh, above half, there's a part where it just spikes. Um, we're going to make some adjustments uh, to the lower part of it to make sure he has some throttle uh, coming up in the low end of it. So we're going to make some adjustments and then we're going to go back up. But I'm going to show you quickly what the problem is as it's going. Okay, as I'm trying to bring this thing down, it seems to be doing good because the, uh, the, the sweet spot here is right in the sweet spot of the throttle. However, as soon as we start going up and throttle a little bit, it spikes real fast. So you have a huge jump in RPM. See, now I can't bring it down, it's kind of rising on you a little bit. And also we've discovered that during the uh, during the rolling harrier, when I kind of lock it in like this, when it starts to fall and I need to save it, the uptick in it 
is too dramatic. So it's going to be really hard to bring this thing low to the ground because the plane over responds when it starts to fall. And we want to eliminate that. So I think I know exactly how to do it. So we'll get in the, the thing and we'll have Tom program it in. We'll take a look at it. Now to start this programming, raise the throttle just a little bit. Let's see how linear it is. Go ahead, move it up. Up, 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 up. Okay. That's the area that's really sluggish. And we're going to control that with sub trim. So uh, we're going to turn the motor off and we'll show you the programming. Okay, as you can see, he has put on a point curve. He had a different curve in it before, unfortunately, so we kind of lost it. But in my opinion, the first part of the, uh, the curve, these first couple points have to come up higher quicker. So we're going to make some simple adjustments. Basically what we did was we brought it up a little bit at the bottom end. We flattened it out a little bit, as you can see, above half because that will basically make it a little softer in that power uh, curve part of the throttle uh, manipulation. The actual audio is out, but here it is. You can see how much softer and smoother my transition is, and the motor is responding much better. Still not perfect. We'll probably be tweaking it for a few more flights, but it's certainly a whole lot better. Okay, on my iX20, there is the throttle curve setting right there. And as you can see on my uh, 120cc laser, I did use a curve on this. It's not very significant, but again, I worked it out. So this really feels a lot better in my hands when I'm doing rolling harriers and hovering basically. As you can see, the line, if it was linear, should be going through that center X but I kind of made just a, a general curve. And this seems to work really well. I only needed three points. Okay, one of the reasons that throttle control is so important is because certain maneuvers, in order to be really smooth, the throttle transition through this, see how smoothly and easily I'm holding the uh, uh, altitude? Adding a little bit of the claws a little bit you know, uh, taking it away when it's climbing. Um, this maneuver requires really precise throttle control. And as you can see on Tom's uh, gas airplane, it was pretty hard uh, to keep that rolling harrier uh, clean because the throttle was, was just giving me too much for not enough. Um, although I found it fairly easy to, uh, you know, to lock it into a hover, uh, it's just the transitioning in and out of a hover that was very difficult.